Hi, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about caravan chassis. Really, we are. <laughs> are you still with me? Okay, so it's and it's the Alco lightweight caravan chassis. So this chassis will be fitted on probably 98% of UK manufactured caravans. So if you own a UK manufactured caravan, your caravan is probably going to have an Alco chassis. So why do you need to know anything about the chassis? Very good question. Um, so you, you'll have many interactions with the chassis without even realizing it. And there's a lot of things, or in fact, a lot of things, in fact, everything's attached to the chassis, everything from jockey wheel to your road wheels to your motor movers. In fact, let's not give too much away. I don't want to ruin the excitement for you. So anyway, so stay tuned. After this little bit of waffle, I'm going to tell you all about the caravan chassis. Make sure you've got your pen and paper with you because there'll be a test at the end. <laughs> there won't, I don't want to disappoint you. So first up are the corner steadies, one in each corner. Um, two types of steady, heavy duty and standard. Heavy duty are generally used on top of the range caravans that are, that by their nature are heavier. Now something you have to remember with corner steadies, they are corner steadies and not levelers. So don't attempt to level your caravan with stays that can cause damage. Next up is the spare wheel cage obviously where your spare wheel sits. Now I'd recommend you take this out before you get a puncture, just so A, you know how it works, and B, there are no surprises when you, if and when you do get a puncture and everything's in working order and it comes out as you expect it should. So next up is the road wheel. Anyone that has a car will be familiar with these. Um, slight difference with the caravan wheel, the nuts need to be, you need to use a torque wrench to make sure they're tight check that regularly and secondly um, tires have a lifespan of about five years so just check the date on those alco trailer control device just sits behind the axle if your caravan has one looks just like that what it is is an anti-snaking device and basically if the caravan starts to snake it senses it and applies the brakes um, with the effect of straightening the caravan out again and letting you go on your merry way as is as you can see there not all caravans have it it tends to be high-end ones or you can have it as an optional extra on lower end caravans and there they are testing it brave men next up is a motor mover which most people are familiar with now chassis these days come with pre-drilled holes making it easier to install this kind of thing um, basically it's a motorized cog that um, pushes onto the tire and once it, when it starts to turn, it moves the caravan. This makes parking easier and also makes getting on a pitch easier too. So this end is the stabilizer. It contains a couple of pads that helps with the stability of the caravan, as well as working with the ATC. So to, to make sure that the caravan goes exactly where you want it to go and always follows the car, which is always good. So here's the jockey wheel. This is a multi-purpose device. Um, first of all, it can be used as a third or fifth wheel when you're moving the caravan when it's not on the car, obviously keeping the front off the floor. It can also be used to level the caravan a bit so you can uh, move it up and down and the caravan will move with it. So here's the handbrake, fairly self-explanatory I hope. It kind of works the same as a car really, you just pull it up to apply the road brakes and stop the caravan moving. Make sure you've put it down before you pull away when it's attached to the car. Top tip there. So I just wanted to say a few more things about the hitch. Now behind the hitch here, if you look on a caravan, you'll see like a gator type thing, rubber gator, as indicated here. Now this is what's known as the overrun brake. So what will happen is when you're driving along in your car and your car brakes, the caravan will catch up slightly with the car and compress this gator. This then will pull a rod and that will apply the road brakes on the caravan so that the caravan doesn't smash into the car. Isn't that handy? Now I know what some of you are thinking. So why then when you reverse doesn't the caravan brake? Well the, the engineers have thought of that. There's some gizmo on the wheel far beyond my knowledge but there is some gizmo on the wheel that knows it's reversing and therefore doesn't apply the brakes. Thanks for asking. So I mentioned earlier about the chassis having pre-drilled holes. 
Now one of the accessories you can have fitted are these locks. Now they have a, the other side of this lock is attached to the chassis. Um, you put the lock on and then screw something through it to basically attach the lock to the chassis so that the wheel can't be used. Now my advice would be if you've got a twin axle caravan as pictured here, try and avoid these locks because they're very very difficult to fit on twin axles. Single axles they're fine and very good but not recommended for me anyway for twin axles. Now the reason Alco pre-drill holes in chassis is because the modern chassis today are galvanized so against rust and rot. Now if you go drilling holes yourself you're going to um, damage the integrity of that galvanization process so then you have a potential for rust getting into the chassis which obviously nobody wants. Now something that's always bothered me um, is where to jack up the caravan. Uh, what points you can actually jack the caravan from. Now as I said earlier the chassis are galvanized so you need to be really careful that you don't damage them in any way. Um, so really these these things offer the best solution in my opinion. We have the jack on the left you can also get the bottle jack on the right. Now basically there's a bracket that attaches to again pre-drilled pre holes on the chassis so the bracket connects to the chassis you can then safely jack the caravan up with no problem at all and you have no worry about damaging any part of the chassis. So and finally here just a quick look at the chassis before the caravan is plonked on the top. On the left you see the single axle and on the right the twin axle or tandem axle as they call it. So that's pretty much it that's pretty much the anatomy of the chassis. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Right so that's that that's the chassis done. Um, I am aware that I didn't mention the um, breakaway cable bit of an oversight I suppose but basically the breakaway cable is something you attach to the um, tow bar uh, and if the caravan departs from the caravan as you're driving then it will engage the brake so it will basically pull a Bowden cable and lock both brakes on um, which will stop the caravan hurtling down the road so that's it thanks very much for watching I hope it wasn't too dull um, it was a tricky one to film because I wasn't sure whether I should do little bits in between or whether just keep the graphics up all the time. Anyway, it is what it is. Hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, subscribe if it was of use. Um, and let me know if those kind of um, videos are useful rather than me just prattling about whether I could actually educate you on stuff. Hopefully you won't say lots of education because there's not a great deal I know. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.